made by people like you. Your community. Your radio. Your Preston FM. Now, the Foxton Centre in Preston has been around now for over 40 years. And as some of you may know, recently because of a fire... Uh, and the extensive damage that was caused to the building. Uh, It caused lots of hardship, I'm sure, for the people who work there and, of course, for the people who actually use the centre. The good news is that the centre is going to be reopening next month and uh, in the studio to talk about that and to tell us a little more about the centre is the centre director, Tim Keithley. So, Tim, a very good afternoon to you. Hello. Nice to meet you again. So... After 40 years, uh, I, I would imagine the last few months uh, must have been quite a sad time when the fire was discovered. Well, it's been a very interesting time, a- another challenge for us. Um, credit to the whole team, really. They sat down more or less after the fire and just said, right, let's keep going and do, do what we can. And so while the building's not been usable other than you know hosting the staff uh, we've managed to keep the daytime services going uh, on at least two days a week for for local people and some of them are homeless we've managed to carry on doing our children's and youth work from uh, from other locations in Preston so so we've made the best of it really and then uh, when it came to getting the building refurbished we could see that great opportunities to maybe improve things a bit and have a new layout mm-hmm. and um you know the decor and the, the the way the building looks now is fantastic it was, it was all my idea uh, i wanted blue actually but everyone else has gone for a different color scheme um and i'm, I'm saying that because i know they're listening at the moment um and and we've got a really nice building fit for purpose now and the future then uh of the fox and center as you say it is um onward and upward then from uh, the reopening i think so i think um, you know, we are open now um, we've kind of opened the doors again back at the early early august but the idea of the event is kind of combining within a kind of annual meeting and inviting lots of local organizations kind of saying thanks and kind of saying thanks for your support and we are here still and this is the future and it's also saying right that that chapter's closed now you know the building's refurbished and now it's kind of where we're raring to go with all the all the work that we want to do and i suppose that is one thing out of adversity that uh, maybe you'd not thought about in the past is actually the support of the community around you because i know from talking to people and i know after the fire that most people that you know i spoke to uh, the support was there within the other various agencies that must have been nice to hear uh, it was great i mean we <clears throat> from just an email wishing as well through to you know we can bring a team down and do some painting that kind of thing we couldn't really do because most of the work had to be done through insurance and getting proper tenders and, and companies in doing doing the work but the offers were, were there and then when we needed other buildings we managed to get either a good rate you know on on, uh, on, on renting the building or great offers for some of the youth work for cheap transport and free use of um, clubs and, and buildings so so you know I kind of say well done Preston because it felt like lots of people have kind of rallied around to help and for people who don't know Tim lots of people do but for those who don't who are maybe listening maybe new to Preston tell us a little about the work that goes on at the centre okay well I'm glad you're calling it a centre because sometimes it gets reported that we're a homeless refuge or a homeless shelter uh, and, and we're not that I mean people do come and find refuge with us you know it's a safe try and make it a safe place and people who are homeless do come particularly to our daytime services but we do a lot more uh, so today is a community cafe day and so there's food and there's support for people who, who need issues sorting out like where where somewhere to live and benefits sorted out or getting appointments with with services and, and so on uh, but we're also trying to help people train themselves up to be able to get to get work but then uh, this evening there'll be a kids club and uh, you know there's seven to 11 year olds coming in and uh, you know when certainly when when we're going at full uh, at full pelt, there's 25 
uh, charming young people from the local area come in and having a great time. So we do children's work, youth work, and of course we've got uh, another building that we use up Newell Lane where the work with the street-based sex workers is based and another project's based there with working with at-risk young people and doing some schools work around around exploitation and being and, and safe relationships. So, so it's quite a wide range of work that we do. Um, some of it's based in the centre and that's why it's difficult to sort of sum us up but I kind of say we're a youth and community work centre. And uh, certainly uh, exploitation and abuse of young people, a constant topic yes, that's uh, right. in the press at the moment. Yeah. I mean, the centre has been around for 40 years. Mm -hmm. how, how has the situation changed? I mean, these days in 2014, um, presumably benefits, our lack of benefits, and the more we change benefits must mean... Or does it that you have more work coming your way? So at the moment, the current situation, it feels as if <clears throat> some of the new systems that are coming in uh, kind of are, are more difficult to overcome for people who are already struggling. So if someone struggles to, to, to read and write, maybe, then that you know, it's hard enough. But then they might not know their way around a, a computer and everything's been online. So, so maybe we just assume that everyone's computer literate these days well that isn't the case mm. and so that kind of the system benefit system seems to kind of almost legislate against the people who are already you might say disadvantaged and then another part of the modern picture is that people seem to be losing their benefits they're sanctioned for what feels like very minor offenses or very quickly and so people can be without any money at all for a period and it seems to me that's very short-sighted because you know that's that in itself must create for the a person being dependent on, on, on others to, to, to help them out at this, at this moment so it doesn't seem to be a good climate at the moment um, for people so that again so we're trying to, to work hard to help people develop the resources to, to, to be more kind of sustainable living uh, in, in this day and age and, and hopefully for some to move on and get employment and I I walk in and out of Preston daily usually apart from Sunday and even Sundays and to me the the number of people who seem to be on the streets who are saying the homeless seems to have risen over particularly maybe seven or eight months is that something that you're witnessing from your position it's a very complicated picture of who you see on the street um, some, uh, so for example, if they're obviously on the street, they might be begging or they might be in a sleeping bag. Uh, not everyone who begs is necessarily street homeless, but we are picking up um, information that some people are begging because their money's run out. So they may have somewhere to live, but they're, they're really just, the money's just not going round. Um, yes, I think nationally you would would look at figures saying numbers of rust sleepers and homeless people is going up. What we'd say in Preston is that lots of agencies work really hard and very well together to try and keep that situation um, kind of under control. Is not quite the, quite the right phrase, but you know we're aware that you know, we we do outreach every day. We do nighttime outreach once a fortnight, sort of three o'clock in the morning, just to see who's actually bedded down. We do a lot of uh, work in conjunction with other agencies. The police and the city council are very much involved in our kind of multi-agency approach. So I think Preston can say it's doing everything it, it can to, to address the issue, given the resources that we all have. And I, I mean, I, I don't know if this is a question that I pose to you, but having a kind of social conscience, and I know from talking to other friends, I do pass people on the street and I, I, I do tend to give money to them. Mm -hmm. And there's always a, a debate about, is that the right or wrong mm -hmm. thing to do? Mm -hmm. Is there any advice comes from agencies like yourself? Should we give money to people on the streets? Well, I guess we can't make your mind up for you. <laughs> um, we would say we're always willing to accept your money. If you have any doubts about giving the money to an individual, give it to an organisation you know <clears throat> is trying to work with that individual. Uh, and we will assure you that we will do our best to use that money really wisely. And as I say, the money that, that we uh, get is for 
to pay for staff who work and work really hard at building relationships of trust and, and one of our mottos at the Fox and Centre is we are here uh, and we you know pride ourselves that we've been there since 1969 but also um, through all the kind of ups and downs of relationship with one of our, the people who uses our services you know sometimes things go well sometimes things don't go well and sometimes we we don't see them for a while but we we're still here and when the time comes they want to come back into service with us then we're still there and we're willing to give it another try kind of thing and i think that's really important for some people that kind of safety net Mm -hmm. and so um so that that i would i would say we're worth supporting and uh, if you had any doubts about the validity of giving money to an individual give it to an organization that you know and can trust particularly local organizations who don't get the same profile and the same kind of support as some of the big national charities because donations are often the lifeblood aren't they particularly as you say of local yes and when we have to do have to do a lot of hard work in raising the money so we're doing a lot of bids to people like um the big lottery comic relief children in need you know the ones that everyone knows there are a lot of other organizations out there that are grant making trusts and we have to apply to those but that's long time consuming but one of the things we are getting more of and at the moment and have had certainly since the fire is more local donations from people and, and that's fantastic really is worthwhile so as you say all the staff after the fire pulled together the support of other people other agencies in preston which you know it is uh, a testament to the work and the recognition of the work that's going on at the foxton center so it's uh, now going to be the reopening in September? Yeah, 19th of September. It's a Friday, a Friday lunchtime. Um, I think the other thing to say is really is the people who use the services, well done to them as well, because you know they've been disrupted immensely and they've gone along with the best that we you know. They've recognised that we have done the best that we can and they, um, you know, the phrase we use, they haven't kicked off too much, you know, <laughs> about losing some of, you know, they were obviously really disappointed and, and very upset that they'd lost their building but recognized all that we've done um, for example one of those fine days in uh, in uh, the summer we we had a barbecue in the car park because we couldn't have access to a building that day so you know they've recognized we've done our best and they've kind of done their best as well if you see what i mean so 19th of september yes kind of inviting new organizations we're very pleased the chief exec of the council lorraine norris has come in to kind of formally open the building even though we are open um and, and it's a way of saying right that chapter's finished and here we go you move on and as center director what's the vision for the future what would you like to see well i'd like to live in the uh, in the time when i didn't have to worry every few months about another project needing more funds you know that's a constant and ongoing um uh, a piece of my work I, I think i suppose you know ideally i would like to feel that the Foxton center was no longer needed um uh, you know there weren't homeless people uh, people were in uh, family networks or they had work or you know there was a much fairer society there's much less of a gap between the the rich and the poor you know okay that's idealism isn't it but uh, a guy called tawny said yeah it's all it's um you may not have achieved the ideal but it's that doesn't mean to say you shouldn't work for it it. Mm. yes a uh, lovely place to stop the interview there, Tim. And people can go online, can't they, to find out more about the Fox and Centre and yes. the work and make donations, yes. etc. Foxandcentre.co.uk and, uh, and there's links to Facebook and plenty of chances to give money and volunteer, all, all kinds of ways of being involved. Right, Tim, lovely to see you and nice to talk about the designated reopening and I'm sure we'll be meeting in the future. Thank you very much Thank for you. that. Thank you. Thank you. 103.2 Preston FM, keeping it local.